Today, folks, we're getting updates on one Canadian stock to buy called Parcel Pal Logistics. It's focused on last mile deliveries and be has really become this true turnaround story during this recessionary environment. With some pivotal news and a bit of restructuring within the company to discuss, we have Rich, the Chief Executive Officer, as always. Welcome back, sir. Appreciate your time, Kyle. Thank you. Yeah, love having you on. You guys are one of these really clear to understand companies. And since you've taken over, a lot's changed, especially coming into the latter half of this year. And you recently just announced the shift in strategy to further expand, you know, Parcel Pal's margins with its focus on its U.S. business and kind of shedding right. its money losing businesses, uh, those units here in Canada. Do you want to discuss what you're kind of getting rid of? Yeah, sure. I mean, this has been something that this didn't just pop up overnight. I mean, if you look at the company and for those who've been following the company for the past, you know, three and a half years since I've been CEO, we've never really made any money in Canada. I mean, that's been that's been the issue. A lot of where our money has been made has been the US with our Amazon FedEx and we're looking at expanding and doing some additional work. So it was a decision that I didn't take lightly. It was something that I've been thinking about for the past, you know, year and realized that we're better off shifting our resources in an area that we're going to have much higher margins because the margins that we had were, you know, anywhere from three to 5% in the Canada side. You know, that was the whole thing with, with Amazon. That's how, that's how little it is. So I decided, look, we can do more business where we can make 20, 25% margins and doing traditional B2B work as well. You know, whether it's pharmaceutical meal kit delivery or we find the right customers we can cherry pick those because right now cash is at a premium. So decided let's focus those resources instead of having to continue, continue to support the losses in Canada from the U S side, let's focus resources purely on the U S side. And it's not to say that we would not be you know, doing business in Canada, because I know that's probably one of the things people think that we're completely pulling out. That's not the case. We will still continue to do traditional boutique, uh, high end customers that come to us that if it makes sense, we'll do them. But for the most part, We'll focus on doing deals in the U.S. that we can scale pretty quickly. Yeah, I definitely appreciate kind of hitting the nail on the head because I have seen comments of people saying that this is a more or less a low margin industry. But I think there are some big potential with exactly what you're stating here and kind of yeah. achieving. Uh, you did mention in that report that uh, for your U.S. businesses, achieving net profitability mm -hmm. as of June 2023, like this is a good aspect of the business to focus on. Is. You're also seeing organic opportunities for higher margins, that reoccurring revenue. Do you want to discuss some of those contracts? You briefly mentioned Amazon, some of those heavy hitters that you're kind of uh, working alongside. But do you want to just talk a little bit about that U.S. side of the business? Yeah, the U.S. side's been been doing pretty fine. I mean, we've, you know, not to say we haven't had our struggles. Like last mile in general, you know, the margins, as you kind of um, aforementioned a second ago, yes, they are pretty low historically. But that's why I would like to continue to work in other areas, whether that be warehousing or first mile or doing line haul. There's a lot of opportunities that we have that we can grow outside of last mile, for instance. So. That's where I would like to focus on some of the tertiary pieces of logistics and things that we can kind of add on and stack and be able to expand pretty quickly. Yeah, and I also want to point out here that it's a very intriguing business with the opportunities you guys have presented to you in this kind of recessionary environment as e-commerce kind of continues to scale. And it's been one of mm -hmm. these more cushioned sectors of the market, uh, even though I'm sure a lot of those businesses that are selling products might be uh, seeing some lower volume, but there's other products that are right. picking up the difference, right? But now that you've kind of trimmed that fat and all your focus is geared in the U.S. for this last quarter, uh, what are you most focused on? What should investors pay attention to? Where's your attention moving toward uh, now? Yeah, our attention's right, right now towards, you know, delivering a great customer and, and experience right now. And that's been the big thing because Q4 is our largest quarter. We are going to, you know, our business is through the roof. We're up, you know, about 25, 30% right now, just in terms of the volume of deliveries that we see over last year. And it's going to pick up even further. So making sure that we keep up with the demand, having the vehicles and the people to be able to support that as well is the number one piece. So I think going through making sure that we can deliver that great customer experience and focus our last uh, three, you know, two and a half months of the year on that. And as we go into 2024, look to expand. And that's, and that's the key, which will, you know, we'll take a little bit more capital, but hopefully we'll do it under, under some better terms as well. So, you know, we will look to raise some capital when the timing's right as well. And that's something that, you know, every company will have to do, but the good news is, you know, we haven't had to go to the markets and raise any capital in a couple of years. That's been, you know, any significant kind of capital. We did do the small raise back in March, but you know, that was, you know, a minimal a minimal raise. But we like would like to do a larger one so we can really look to expand upon some of the sites and opportunities that we do have in the states as opposed to having to, you know, support some of the you know losses in Canada, which is what we were having to do before as well. 
Yeah, I definitely appreciate you talking kind of uh, looking forward to. And if this is a conversation uh, the viewers appreciate, I highly recommend subscribing because as this story continues to evolve uh, into this very intriguing place and earnings and all the stuff comes into play, we're going to bring it to you here. Uh, but on that note, as always, we look forward to catching you in the next one.